Nila Acharya left Nepal with a dream to make a better future for her two young daughters. Two months later, her body was flown home in a coffin. Her aunt Manju and her extended family came to collect her body from Kathmandu airport. Leela had sought the help of a local recruitment agent to find a job overseas. The agent arranged for her to travel to Lebanon, but instead of a job as a domestic worker, Leela was trafficked into slavery. Every day, the bodies of one or two of Nepal's migrant workers are flown home to Kathmandu. Like Leela, they have paid the ultimate price for a simple wish, to make a better life for them and their family. Nepal is one of the world's poorest countries. A quarter of the population live on less than $2 a day, scraping together a living in whatever way they can. It is this poverty, and for many years, the Maoist conflict, which forces around a thousand Nepalis to seek a livelihood abroad every day. According to GFONT, the General Federation of Nepalese Trade Unions, this exodus is unavoidable. GFONT is in favor of the migration. Economic activities are very slow here. Investment is very low. Getting job is also very difficult here. Our economy is based on the remittance of the people who work abroad. Therefore, if this remittance will be stopped, our economy will collapse. We cannot stop the outflow of the people, but we have to manage it. We have to make this migration safe. Every day, hundreds join the long queue for passports to leave the country but few realize the risks involved. The exploitation begins in Nepal at the hands of recruitment agents. Hundreds of local agents promise potential migrants generous salaries overseas, but too often these promises prove empty. When there is the destination, whatever what company was described in the agreement, there will be no company. In another company, uh, they will be underpaid, even they will be deprived of the minimum wages and basic facilities, whatever has been promised by the agent. This is the situation. But with little prospect of work, thousands of Nepalis are prepared to pay the agents large fees in the hope of making a living overseas.
many end up in the Gulf countries, where the demand for cheap labor remains high. Simon was put to work as a watchman at the Shaila labor camp for migrant workers on the outskirts of Manama, the capital of Bahrain. The camp, here shot secretly, is notorious. Until recently, workers were forced to collect scraps of firewood to cook with. Air conditioning units were installed in the huts, but they were rarely allowed to use them, despite summer temperatures that can reach 50 degrees centigrade. Two Nepali workers died here in 2009. <laughs> Poor pay and working conditions and the economic recession have forced thousands of migrant workers to leave their work and scrape a living illegally. They are known as Khalibali, those with no status. Without money, passports, documentation, and the knowledge and language to negotiate the labor system, they are stranded. <laughs> Many are reduced to relying on handouts to survive. Some must now face the shame of asking for money from their families in Nepal in order to return home. In the same park, another group of migrants is stranded. They have paid agents as much as $6,000 to work in Afghanistan, only to find themselves stuck in the United Arab Emirates with little hope their jobs will materialize. When their visas run out, they must return to Nepal with no guarantee they will get their money back. We were taken to see their accommodation, but when we arrived, the workers demanded we left. They couldn't risk the agent finding us there. <laughs> When we returned on another night and convinced them to let us stay, we found dozens of men living in stifling, cramped rooms. How many men share this room? As now is 14. Uh, sometimes it's up to 20, 21, 22 also. And how much did you pay the agent to come uh, here? It's equivalent to five to six hundred, six thousand dollar. If you don't go to Afghanistan, yeah. can you get the money back? I'm not sure. It's 50-50 uh, chances because uh, now my agent mobile is switched off, and we don't. Uh, I don't know his home. Uh, it's very little chance to return back money. Behind the closed doors of private homes, domestic workers are even more vulnerable to abuse. 
Chandra Maya Rai hoped to make a good living in Bahrain to support her young daughter in Nepal. But instead, she was starved and beaten until she fled to the local agent's office begging to leave. But the agent had no sympathy. Back in Nepal, Chandra Maya's mother regrets her daughter ever left. The price for some is even higher. An hour's drive from Kathmandu, Sumita was trafficked to Saudi Arabia and Kuwait when she was just 17. She managed to return to her parents' home, but she's still too traumatized to speak about what happened. Without even the most basic legal protection, migrants like Sumita and thousands of others across the Gulf remain vulnerable to the worst forms of exploitation. If they will be unionized, if they will be organized and collectively, if they could work in the destination countries, then they can save themselves. And if we could link them with the right-based organizations in the destination countries, national trade union centers of the destination countries, then their migration will be safe. When Nepalese working for the Gulf City Cleaning Corporation in Bahrain complained to the management about conditions in the camp and low pay, eight were deported without warning. But at this meeting in the workers' camp, organized by the Bahraini trade unions, 
workers finally had the chance to air their grievances. By beginning to facilitate a dialogue between the workers and management, the trade unions hope to secure better conditions for the workers. We have to remove their fear. I think it's very important to remove their fear so that they can be more courage to speak and to tell what, what they want. So, so by this we can create understanding between them and the management and to deal with all their issues uh, in terms of wages, uh, living conditions, hygiene conditions. We should understand these needs. After being forced to leave his job, Simon Chetri found himself illegal and alone in Bahrain. Without his passport, he would roam the streets, collecting drink cans, which he would exchange for a few dinars. But with the help of local activists, he eventually managed to leave. I am going to go to the house. I am going to go to the house. I After two years, Simon's return home was bittersweet. He was finally reunited with his family, but he still owes over $1,000, and there is little hope of finding work. His family have also paid a price. Regardless of the risks, thousands of Nepalis will continue to leave in the hope of a better life. But as long as labor laws and workers' rights are ignored, many will find the cost of living is even higher overseas. And every day, a small number will pay the ultimate price. As Leela Acharya's body is driven away, yet another coffin arrives. <laughs> Thank you.